Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Secrets of the Lost Tomb and the Pharaoh with the Blue Eyes and we're on turn 8 and we're beginning with James. Just before we start, just a couple of things. An error I made last turn is when we got attacked by the Terracotta Army I should of course have took some Courage off Heidi and off Chris uh, should have lost three courage, then I should have given them half back when the actual um, Terracotta army got killed off. So they'd have lost three and then got two back because you round up. So I've done that now, I've done that off camera. Uh, James didn't lose any because he was using the Sagittarius bow, which brings us on to the Sagittarius bow. I'm not going to go into any great detail, suffice to say there is a discussion about whether it's a weapon or not. I'm in the it's a weapon camp because it's a bow, it's got arrows, it does damage, all sorts of things. Um, there's another school of thought that says it isn't, and if it isn't, it can't be used in the tomb phase. Well, I don't agree. Uh, I'm not going to go into any great detail. Anybody who wants to look at the previous video and in the comments, it's pretty much all in there. I'm in a bit of a rush because it's my birthday weekend. Consequently, I have relatives staying. So... I've got to finish this game before they arrive, which is today. So I'll be, I'll probably be doing three or four, you know, in a row. It won't be a massive long video. I'll just do separate ones. But what that also does mean is that I will not be able to fix any errors I make in between now and actually finishing the game. So apologies for that in advance because I will make mistakes. But at least you're getting a good idea of how the thing plays. As far as the Sagittarius bow goes, I will continue to use it as a weapon. Anybody who's out there who does not agree with that and doesn't want to use it as a weapon, that is perfectly fine. I am not here to tell anybody how to play their games. I do say this occasionally, but it's worth reiterating now and again. Play your game the way you wish to play your game. Put whatever house rules that you feel comfortable with into that game, you have paid your money. It is your game. Play it how you wish. You do not have to play it the way I play it. That is my decision because I have paid good money for the game. It's my game and I'll play it how I wish. Now, if my playing my game in my way um, distresses anybody, well, sorry. Because, you know, it's, it is. It's, it's my game and I'll play it how I like. It's as simple as that. And as I say, if it distresses anybody, by all means, feel free to unsubscribe, leave, dislike, whatever. You know, knock yourselves out, it's fine. I don't make any money off the channel or anything. You're not doing me out of anything, and I perfectly understand. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. But I will be carrying on playing with the Sagittarius bow as I have been. That out of the way... As I mentioned, I'm in a bit of a rush, so we're going to have to get cracking. So let's get into the adventure phase, and it's James. And here we are with James. What's James going to do? Is James going to attack the Silverback Ancient with the Sagittarius Bow? No, he isn't. And I'll tell you why he isn't. Because it's quite a clever piece of design. Now, the Sagittarius Bow... As you know, it doesn't have dexterity or strength icons on here because it's an auto hit. We are not creating a dice pool. But because it's an auto hit, what the designers have had to do is say, well, it's just that just be mega powerful. Just like bam, 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 getting four damage all the time. So what they have put in is if we actually read it, it says you do four damage and you ignore armor. But if the creature's attack value is greater than four, you take damage equal to the dif to the difference. Well, that is why we are not going to use it on the Silverback, An Silverback Ancient, and we're not going to use it on Raz. The Silverback Ancient has an attack value of 12. So for every four damage we put on this guy, and remember he's got 10 health left, we will take eight damage. So we take twice as much damage. So... That bow is essentially for trash mobs. 
if you've got a if they've got a pretty low attack value then yes it's very strong but against the silverback ancient and against raz it's just it's just going to kill you you cannot afford to use it so he's got 10 health left we'd have to hit it three times with the bow because it does four damage at a time that would mean 24 damage gets reflected back three times eight now barbarossa has only got six health left so that's him destroyed with an additional two damage to james and then the extra two hits would be an extra 16 damage to james so he's taking 18 damage well he only has 13 health so that would kill him yeah so completely useless using the sagittarius bow against this guy so that is how the designers have sort of toned it back yeah so what's he going to do then if he's not going to do that i mean he could attack with his rifle but first of all let's get rid of this guy and get ourselves some soul shards because this is just a common or garden follower of anubis and he only has three attacks so we're not going to lose anything by hitting this guy with a sagittarius bow he's in an adjacent room he's got no armor which doesn't count anyway but he's only got four health and the Anubis and the bow does four damage Woo and we'll get two soul shards so top banana yay so we get rid of that guy using the sagittarius bow get two soul shards in fact that'll put us up to 20 so i'll take these three and we'll get five so it's up to 20 and we've got rid of a possibly annoying attacking monster in the tomb phase so that is it for james he has gone as usual didn't lose any courage didn't gain any courage anything like that that's fine next player is chris and here we are with chris what I'll do is what I just forgot to do with James is we'll flick his action over. I've done it for James, but off camera. So here's his first action. What is he going to do? Well, it's him that he's going to deal with this sort of silverback ancient for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to move into here. We're going to take five courage damage, which is a bit of a blow. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Puts us on to minus one. Then what we're going to do is we are going to use keep the change action. Discard Tommy gun to deal 10 damage to any target. So it ignores armor. So we are discarding the Tommy gun. Essentially what he's doing is he, he's... He's emptying the clip, man. <laughs> emptying the whole clip into this guy, which he'll kill it because he's only got 10 armor left after that um, trap that we used outside the tomb. So he will get 10 soul shards for that. Um, we've got rid of the silverback ancient. So let me sort that out. 10 soul shards. But we also get half our courage back, which was two and a half, which he gets rounded up to three. So that goes to one, two, three. He's back on to plus two. And we discard the Tommy gun, which is unfortunate. So got rid of the Tommy gun. But what it does mean is we've got rid of that horrible silver black silverback ancient i wanted to keep the tommy gun to sort of do exactly the same trick on raz but unfortunately we can't the silverback ancient is too tough so bummer but it does mean that uh, we've managed to get rid of that horrible elite monster so that is it for chris i believe right oh so that means heidi is next and here we are with Heidi and she's got an action to do. So I think what we're going to do first is we're actually going to trade. We're going to trade with James. Found out last turn that obviously she would be better using the rod of... What is it? The rod of... Uh, the Staff of Ra. Sorry. <laughs> She'd be better using the Staff of Ra because her knowledge is amazing. Especially with Sir Lawrence and where her... Oh no... 
we moved her back so she's not getting plus one um, knowledge. But Ed, basically, she's got the best knowledge by a mile. And she's also got the circlet of man mentality and all sorts of stuff. So let's give her all those uh, artifacts. So we'll put all these here because she is unfortunately going to have to fight Raz. So she's got all those. Is there anything else that we're going to swap? Don't think so. No, we will keep it at that. So she's just done a trade action. So that is it for her. Let's get into the second round of actions. And that means James. Here we are with James. Let's flick that over again. So it's now his second action. <clears throat> What's he going to do? Well, he's got 20 soul shards. So let's buy something. I did have a plan here, but it gets scuppered. <laughs> as you will see what I was thinking of doing was actually buying Wendigger's Ward mainly because you are immune to all conditions includes positive and negative effects well I thought oh when Raz comes up if he buys this he can give it to Heidi and everything will be honky dory until I read the bottom bit which says when you take damage always take an extra damage but you may not drop trade or discard this item so he can't give it to Heidi anyway so let's not bother with that what he will do though is he will get the heart soup yeah so he'll take this and uh, he will put it down there we'll figure out a way you know, I think we'll get a chance to do another trade and we can give it to Heidi because she'll be facing the big guy. So anyway, that cost 11. So I will sort that out. There we go. Need four change. There we are. So that is it for James's second action. Next up is Chris. And here we are with Chris. I think we're going to leave Chris here. He's sort of going to guard the entrance for anything that comes in off this journey to the tomb tile. Remember, we will still have to roll on that. So there's still a chance of getting stuff coming through the front door. So he's going to guard the front door. Although he's lost his um, Tommy gun, he does have the pump action shotgun. So he has, you know, he's, he's, he's doing pretty well. We'll flick this over. Let's remember to do our action. So what's he going to do? Well, if you remember, we are now on green for searching. So we're going to do the old roller die, but we're going to do it on the green part of the table, which is Tomb Raider. So let's see what we can get. So we've got a roller die. Let's roll a red one. That's <laughs> six. I'm just a beast. Let's just do this again. Prove they're not loaded. See, you've got a five there. Oh, another six. This is a good dice. This, I'm wasting this dice. But there you go. You see, you don't always get a six on it. I will put it to one side, though. It's a good one. So, we got a six. God, just a boss. Right. So, we can get two sort of equipment cards and we get to take one and discard the other. So, let's get the equipment deck. Needless to say, I'm not going to say what we could do with, because if we actually pull it, then it's just one of those cat weasel incidents that I can do without. So there we go. So we've pulled two and keep one. First one is a rocket launcher. Awesome. So come on, focus. Rocket launcher equipment, four. So you just... Um, do, 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 around. Distribute 12 damage to any creatures in this room. You may choose one or multiple creatures to damage. Other investigators in the room must make a dexterity check and get two successes. If they fail, they lose five health. When you've used this item four times, discard. That's pretty good, but and it might do against Raz. But let's see what the second one is. A breastplate armor body so it gives you plus two armor and plus one strength but minus two dexterity and minus one movement well I think we'll discard the breastplate 
we'll get rid of that we will keep the rocket launcher I think this might be good you know just at the last minute if Raz is just on a few you know a few if he's got a few damage left we can use this to sort of run in and like finish him off I think so there we go rocket launcher the one that I was going to make, I think there are more than one uh, Tommy gun. <laughs> I was going to say we could do it with the Tommy gun. But then if I'd pulled out a Tommy gun, it would have been hell to pay. But as it is, cool. So he's got a rocket launcher. So well done, Chris. That's it for Chris. Let's move on to Heidi. And here we are with Heidi and her second action. So there you go. Righty ho, what's she going to do? Well, I think she is actually going to search as well. So let's see if she can get anything decent. Where was that? Dice. <laughs> Come on. Come on. A five. So it wasn't a six, but uh, it wasn't far off. That is a good dice. I'm going to put that on the journey to the tomb tile. Right, here we go. So we get plus one. We don't get a choice, but we do get something. So well worth doing this before Raz arrives. You know, get as much equipment as we can. See if there's anything that will help us. And she's got the Mesmerizer, a knowledge weapon. Knowledge two-handed, what does it do? Plus four attack. If successes are greater than or equal to the creature's attack value, that creature deals no damage for one round. That is an interesting weapon. It wouldn't be too good against Raz, for example, because he's got 13 attack. So there you go. When are you going to get 13 successes? But a nice weapon, a very nice weapon. You never know, we might have to use it on something else. <clears throat> so that is it for her she has searched and next up it's the final round of actions so we're back to james again and here we are with james what's james gonna do well he's gonna search let's get searching got no monsters apart from two that can't reach us anyway and raz who's on his way up so let's get searching it's green let's use our favorite die at least till it betrays us. Come on. And it's betrayed us. We got to. <laughs> but we had a good run with it. So let's get rid of that. And now we've got some bad news. Because a two is bad I think. Yeah two. We've got. Um, I think that's a story icon. So I think we're going to have to pull a story card. Just let me check. Yeah an adventure card. But at least it's not misadventure. So let's get the deck and get cut then we'll pick off the bottom put that back and what have we got adventure a barren tree stands before you it's bark shaped as if to form a face as you approach, the tree coughs a few times. Its eyes blink and open, and the tree smiles at you. It greets you and bids you closer. Mythos. Dun, dun, dun. That's a problem. So, his mythos is two. Is he getting anything from anywhere? I think I could have used the... Um, what is it? The cowl of Anubis or the ruby scarab, but I've already given it away, which is a bit of a bummer. So, no, I think we've just got to roll two. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. Ha <laughs> ha, two successes. The beast. So, let's read the pass. The tree tells you that the coming winter will bring the fall of humankind. Well, that's nice. That the tomb is trying to return its prisoners to their homes and that the tomb's defences are beginning to break down. You're shocked. Once finished, the tree closes its eyes again. 
plus one knowledge. So we get plus one knowledge. There's the fail effect, if anybody wants to have a quick read of it. And there we go. So not too bad. We've done all right there. We get plus one knowledge. I'll dig out a token. I think it's one of the purpley ones. His knowledge isn't very good, so this puts him up to three, I think. Well, there we go. He's up to three knowledge. So not too bad. I would have preferred to obviously find some sort of equipment, but uh, twas not to be. I'll keep those two. Those were two successes, weren't they? Right, so that was it. James has done all his actions for this turn. Next up is Chris. And here we are with Chris. So let's flip that over. This is his last action for this turn. What's he going to do? Well, from what I can see, you can search as much as you like. So he's going to search again. So let's use one of these, which was particularly good just a moment ago. So he's going to search this room again. From what I could tell in the rules, you can search the room as many times as you like. And a five. So he does find another item. Let's see if you can get something pretty funky that'll help us. Oh, there we go. And bump. Ooh, what's this? M1 mine. Trap. This may well help us. So action. Place this card in your current room. When a creature moves into this room, audacity check. If we pass, roll two dice and deal that much damage to that creature and any other creatures in that room. When an adventurer walks into this room, so it walks into, if it's already in the room, we're fine, then they've got to do a dexterity check. If they pass, they discard the card. If they fail, they take six damage. Discard after triggering, so that could be very useful because it affects every creature and we could get two dice worth of damage onto that creature. Excellent. It's a pity. If we'd found that, you know, instead of the rocket launcher last turn, I would have actually moved this turn, you know, but get on here. You can drop, you can drop that mine, I think. And then we just wait for Raz, don't we? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, if we'd got it like first, first action, we could have moved to here and put the mine in and then moved away. So, got it a bit late, but I'll have a think about that. Should be some way to uh, use that to our advantage. Let's put these back. Right, that is it for Chris. That's the end of his actions. Our last adventurer will be Heidi. And here we are with Heidi. What Heidi's going to do is she is going to search. Did consider trading for that heart suit, but I think we'll have time to do that next turn before we get stuck into a Raz. So uh, we'll flick that over and she's going to search. We may as well use this die. Use them till they go bad. A six. That's not going bad. God, I'm, God, I'm good at rolling. So put that over there. So that means we get two of these. And we can pick the best one. So we've found some good stuff. And we've what we've really done is we've used this green phase of searching really well. Of course, it's helped that I've rolled fives and sixes and just one single two. But there we go. Done that. First thing is, what's this? Rogues. Rouge Gauntlets. Rogue! Learn to spell. Rogue's Gauntlets. Plus two to all trap tile and item checks. Plus two to all steel checks. Well, I think that's the one we're getting rid of. Elephant Gun. Dexterity two-handed. So plus five. Attack. It ignores armor. All successes deal two damage. This is a beast. May only be fired once per round. Upkeep, roll a die, and a one, two, or three. She's going to keep that. She can use one of her attack actions with this, I think. I mean, she's got a dexterity of two, because she does have a, a plus one dexterity there. But this is well worth it for the amount of successes you get, uh, the amount of damage you get for each success. So that, again, is a good find. Let me organise. She's got loads of stuff. One of the good things as well about this game, you can have as much stuff as you like. 
there's no encumbrance or anything so while like at the moment it looks a bit strange because she's got tons of stuff and she's only a wee slip of a girl it does mean it's a lot easier to you know organize you're not messing around like with fiddly rules so there we go and she does have Jax and uh, Sir Lawrence with her so you can just sort of pretend that they're holding stuff for her I suppose right oh so gauntlets we didn't need those let's get rid and that is fabulous so that is it for the adventure phase everybody's had three actions that means oh yes it's the laugh and chuckle phase And here we are at the tomb phase. So first things first, tomb card. Let's see what we get. Oh, a red one. Chains of the dark one. All do not gain soul shards this tomb phase. Well, that's fine because we're not going to be attacked. We've got to move the creatures. So... He can't move any further, the sniper. This guy can only move one because that's his movement. So he's going to move in there. Doesn't matter anyway. As soon as he gets into that room, he's not going to move anymore. But Raz, oh, Raz can move. One, two, three, four. So imagine these guys are there and he's just coming up the stairs, baby. The pharaoh with the blue eyes, they just see the crest of his like pharaoh's crown and then them blue eyes coming out of the darkness Ooh. so he has moved there great stuff creature combat well nobody's near enough even good old raz he hasn't quite made it we've got spawn creatures and this is horrendous we get an elite on level one an elite on level two which will be able to come up and we will get a level three normal monster which is stuck down there We'll do the normal monster first, seeing as it's not going to bother us that much because it cannot escape out the third level. And we get a terracotta warrior. This isn't the swarm though, this is just one of them on their own. Let's have a look. Wars are not won by men, they are won with armies. Well, there's only one of you. La, so two movement, you lose a courage, got uh, what is it, two attack, two armor, two health, evasion's pretty easy, and it's one soul shard. So we'll put in there. Apologies, the phone's going. Bloody nuisance callers, bastards. Right, Terracotta Warrior. Ding! He's down there. Don't have to worry about him anymore for the rest of the game. However, second level, second level elite. We don't have to worry about that. Oh. So, we have breezed through this game a bit, but I can't help but thinking, you know, if I'd been a bit unluckier and got a few more of these red cards, we'd have been really up against it. Really up against it. So. Ugh. Uh, perhaps um, for the sake of this game I may have put having just three actions each may have been pushing it I've got away with it because I'm jammy I think <laughs> right so the first one that is coming is Da Vinci's Decimator so he's our second level chap and the next one is Guardian of Atlantis right let's set those up and then we'll have a look at them. Put that there. Need two red stands. Let's have a look at this one on the second level. Da Vinci's Decimator. Undead. If it's dead and moving, kill it again. Good advice. Ooh, looks like some sort of cut price Frankenstein got two movement which is good it'll take us a while it'll take him a while to catch up to us we lose five courage we're going to struggle on the courage front we are going to struggle on the courage front it's got 10 see this is another one we can't deal with with the bow the bow's out yeah 
we'd just kill ourselves if we use the Sagittarius bow. So this guy's tough. At least it hasn't got any armour, but it does have 10 health. Uh, it's one to evade and you get five soul shards. That is going to be tough. That is really going to be tough. In fact, I was quietly confident about winning this. I am not so sure now. If we get many more like this coming out, and we haven't even looked at this guy yet, who's on our level. So he's got one movement, but that's all he needs. Got Guardian of Atlantis, who's a golem. Something should remain lost, you're right. So one movement, but that's enough to get into our room next turn. We only lose one courage, that's good. But, again, he's got eight attack. <clears throat> so if we were to use... And he's got 13 health, four armor. If we were to use the bow, we'd deal four damage and get hit for four. But I think we might have to use the bow on this guy because of the amount of health he's got. At least get some of his health down. And using the bow, of course, we ignore armor. And uh, let's get some off him while he's in that room. Yeah. Two to evade, seven soul shards. He's a beast. Yeah, we're going to really struggle and uh, things are looking bad for Barbarossa because I think he's going to have to set one for the team in order that we can get rid of uh, we can get rid of that you see so that was nasty we've got we have got two elites that are within striking distance yeah so in fact we'll put him in we've got two red rooms so we'll put him in there We'll put him in there. I don't think he triggers the traps here. I'll check that. If he does trigger the traps, then <laughs> we'll make sure he takes a trap. But uh, I don't think he does. We can put him in that room. We can choose. There are both red rooms, both red spawning rooms. So um, we'll put him in that one for a bit of a change. Right, so that is spawning a whole lot of horrible monsters. Now we're in the upkeep phase. Well, although we used the Tommy gun, we obviously like completely emptied it and chucked it away in killing the silverback. So we don't have to do that. None of the other firearms were used, so we don't have to do them. So it's just the Necronomicon. Let's dig it out. And she lost her courage, didn't she? Yes. So um, she don't get that plus one, but she does get a shed load of others. So I think it's eight dice. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, did she get a plus one? Oh no, it was James got a plus one, wasn't it? So it's eight dice. We need two successes. One success. That is not enough. Has she got an audacity? Has she got... Oh, she's got something else. I think. PhD. As a free action, remove a special ability token to re-roll any upkeep check. She's got three of these. Remember these? We haven't, we haven't used them yet. She had three of them. She's going to remove one and we can re-roll that check. And we're going to have to re-roll that check because uh, we can't afford Jack's ever morning to start attacking us either. So what an awful roll. So we'll keep the five. I'm gonna get rid of the other dice, so swap them out. They're not good enough. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So come on. We need two successes. Come on. Ah! Done it again! How many times can you use a special ability? How many times? It doesn't say. It just says remove another. So I'm going to re re I'm going to remove another one and go again. Hang on. I'll have to check whether you can do it twice. But it says on there. It just says remove a token and redo. Yep. Yeah, couldn't find anything. So the second of her tokens has gone because we've got a re-roll again. Does it say on here I can't re-roll? Nope, doesn't say I can't re-roll. 
eight dice. Mind you, it could be worse, couldn't it? I could be rolling these against Raz. So, there is that. Right, we only got two successes then, but we did get two sixes. So, eventually we passed this, but we had to use a PhD ability twice. So, that was a bit of a blow. So, oh. Right. As I say, I had a look. It doesn't say... I couldn't see it anywhere anyway that you couldn't use the PhD ability more than once. So we have done. She's only got that ability. She's only got one left. She's only got one token left, so she can only do that once more. Right, so we've done the upkeep. No, we haven't, because we've got to do the journey to the tomb. So we could get yet another monster coming. A four. No, we got that's greater than a three. Woohoo! So we got lucky there. We could have had another monster coming onto this and attacking this way. But uh, we've got away with it. Right. Search tokens go round one. So we're onto the yellow now. But to be honest, the pharaoh's turned up. I don't think we'll be doing a great deal of searching from now on. Right. Done that. Comet track goes up by one, but it doesn't matter because... Raz has already arrived, but we'll, we'll put it up by one anyway. It's up to seven. So there we go. And that is the end of turn eight. Like I mentioned, I will be sort of whizzing straight into turn nine. If you do spot any errors, though, you know, please put them in the comments. Other people will be able to see them. Unfortunately, I probably won't see them because I'll be straight into turn nine. So <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. But if you do see any errors, do uh, flag them up. And then anybody coming along to the video later on will be able to see where I've cocked up. OK, so that turn, not great. Not great. We've got... Got far too many elite monsters now. We've got... Oh, we're in real trouble. So um, we're going to have to really crack on. I think the thing to do is let's start attacking Raz immediately. Let's just get stuck into him and try and get as many health off him as possible. I think poor old Barbarossa and James are going to take a few hits because they're just going to have to kill this guy. He's a beast. We're going to have to use the bow, kill him, and or at least get him re, re I mean we can't even kill him even if we use the bow three times he's got 13 health so we'll have to see perhaps um, perhaps Chris and James will just march in and try and kill him normally two of them go in here try and kill him in t try and sort of kill him as quickly as possible and then move out I'm not keen in going in that room because it's a spawn room, you know, and if we get um, if we get to the tomb phase next time, which is probable, I don't think we'll be able to kill him in a turn, then we're going to have some real problems because we just have stuff, you know, spawning on us. And we've got this guy. I mean, at least it only moves two, so it'll take a while. One, two. It'll take a while to get to this actual tile. Um, that is a problem, actually, because I was hoping to put Heidi onto here to actually attack oh cobblers we might just all three of us have to go on that tile and just go for it we'll see i'll have a think about it i haven't got much time to think about it because i'm virtually going to start straight away but we'll see we'll see anyway yes it's uh, got a lot more complicated than i wanted it to get and like i briefly mentioned i think you know I might have been pushing it with three actions i think it's looked to doddle because like i've been horrendously lucky but uh, I think if I hadn't been quite as lucky, we would have had loads and loads of monsters. And I think we would have needed those extra actions. And I think losing courage is going to be a real problem here. I'm going to take a big whack off Raz. It's only the once, but he will. You know, we'll take seven hit off him. And these guys, you know, everything that comes in starts taking courage off us. You know, we just need a few bad tomb cards, a few bad spawns, and um, we'll be running out of the tomb, and then it's game over, man. So, anyway, we'll see how we go on. That is it for turn eight. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the likes. Thank you for all the comments. 
thank you for all the help and support it really is appreciated thank you very much all of you have gone across to board game links to upvote the site thank you and same at bgg if you've gone across to any of my videos and liked them or made a comment thank you very much so that is it for turn eight i do hope that you will join me in turn nine but until then this is me cat weasel signing off toodaloo